This is it. The pinnacle of the BMW M cars. The performance coupe that has set the industry standard since it first came out in the 80s. The one that everyone talks about. Welcome everyone to the BMW M4 competition. Everyone knows the prominence of this car when it first came out. The original M4 broke tradition by having a turbocharged straight 6 engine and it also bore a new name, M4. But that wasn't always the case. In the beginning, there was just the M3. It first emerged on the scene in the mid-1980s. To qualify for the DTM Touring Car Race Series, BMW needed to build 5,000 units of the E30 M3 series for homologation purposes. And thus, the first M3 was born with wider arches, a rear wing, an improved chassis and a 2.3-litre inline 4-cylinder engine producing 200 horsepower. And it worked! Despite initial plans for it to be a homologation special, BMW went on to sell almost 18,000 units of the E30 M3. It also then produced the Evo 1 and 2, as well as a final sport evolution iteration, which was powered by a more powerful 2.5-litre inline 4. And then we have the second-generation M3, the E36 which came as a two-door coupe, a four-door sedan, and a convertible. Under the hood of the E36 M3 was a three-litre inline six-cylinder engine that developed 286 horsepower. However, the best was saved for last. The E36 M3 3.2 would see the 3.0-litre engine swell to 3.2 litres and produce an output of 321 horsepower. In other words, BMW had cracked the magical 100 horsepower per litre specific output for a naturally aspirated engine that many other brands are racing towards. Following that was the E46 M3 with the widest of wide arches and the now iconic vents on the fenders. This generation also saw the addition of a rather special car, the M3 CSL. Coupe, sport, lightweight. And lightweight it was. The M3 CSL was 110 kilograms lighter than the standard E46, thanks to extensive use of composites and a carbon fiber roof. The M3 CSL produced 360 horsepower from its 3.2-litre straight 6 engine and could sprint from 0 to 100 in 4.9 seconds. And then came the E90, E92 and E93 generation M3 with its glorious 4-litre naturally aspirated V8 that produced in excess of 400 horsepower. Also, it was the last M3 coupe. Don't get me wrong, the M3 nameplate still exists. It's just been assigned to the sedan version of this car. Part of BMW's whole ethos of giving even numbers to their coupe silhouettes. 2 series, 4 series, 8 series, you get the picture, it's all even numbers now. So then came the very first BMW M4 Coupe, the F82, with a twin turbocharged straight 6 engine churning out 435 horsepower. It had a double clutch gearbox that enabled it to spin from 0 to 100 in 4.1 seconds. Impressive numbers, but the G82 generation M4 takes it a leap further in terms of sheer performance. Under the hood is BMW's S58 engine, a twin turbocharged 3 liter straight 6, churning out 510 horsepower and 650 Nm of torque in this competition spec. The new M4 stopping power comes from these M compound brakes with 6 piston calipers in front, single pistons in the rear. Tucked away behind 19-inch wheels in the front, 20s in the back. It might look like a standard 4 series, but it really is carbon galore in here. Carbon on the dash, carbon on the centre console, carbon on the steering wheel. These pedal shifters are made of carbon fibre too. And these seats are superb. They look sporty as hell, but they are incredibly supportive and they just look cool. Electronically adjustable, despite looking like bucket seats. Unlike the previous F82 generation, this one doesn't get a double clutch automatic. Instead, what you get is an 8 speed M Steptronic torque converter automatic. But it's faster to 100. This new car does it in 3.9 seconds. You can adjust the intensity and speed of the gear shifts by pressing this drive logic button on the gear shifter. You also get these two dedicated buttons for drive modes, so you can switch from docile to hardcore at the push of a button. And if you put it in track mode, that's max attack mode. The infotainment screen shuts off, and your gauge cluster shows you the critical information you'll need when you're really pushing this car. Revs, speed, your current gear, operating temps, and boost pressure. This new M4 also has a drift mode analyzer, which lets you toggle the degree of M traction control with 0 being hero and 10 being 0. The system monitors drift angle, duration, and dare we say, drama, to award the driver with a maximum of 5 stars depending on the level of electronic intervention required to help one out. But of course, this should only be done in a controlled circuit environment. It's quite amazing to see how the M4 has evolved over the years. What started out as a homologation special is now a track-ready performance coupe for the masses. And it is blisteringly quick. This is Top Gear Singapore, 
Thank you for watching.